So we've got a story from uh, ITV about the failure of um, NHS Nightingale, the hospital in London. So if you don't know, this was a hospital basically set up um, to deal specifically with coronavirus uh, patients. And um, yeah, there's, there's, I think, two major reasons as to why um, NHS Nightingale hasn't really taken off. One is the government's fault and one isn't kind of the government's fault, unless they knew better. But um, yeah, so let's dig into this article. So once opened by Prince Charles the Great Fanfare, the uh, first Nightingale Hospital in East London was... Uh, a potent symbol of Britain's ability to fight back against COVID-19. Government made a big deal out of it, like they said you couldn't build a hospital uh, so quickly and we did it, um, and yet it's not working. Shock. Uh, we're worried by a negative view of hospitals. Uh, let's have a look at this. But in the three weeks since it's opened, um, it was opened, doubts about the project has started to creep in. The hospital designed to take 500 with a capacity of 4,000. Um, has only treated 41 patients at a cost of millions a week, and there are rumblings in uh, rumblings the nightingale is turning into an expensive white elephant. I'm not sure what white elephant is. Um, we're worried a negative view of hospitals being allowed to develop. One senior member of the medical team said, um, and having so few patients, we accept them. We expect to be dealing with hundreds. Has not been good for our morale. So I, I don't know if that means they're just standing around or something. I, I'm not sure what that means. Um, ask the government why the nightingales aren't being used, um, and they point. To it as being one of the coronavirus accessories there's a bit of government spin here saying that oh we don't need it because this was meant to deal with overflow and obviously we're not overflowing but we know that's a myth because so many people are dying from uh, covid19 so simon stevens head of nhs england said uh, we have not yet had to make extensive use of nhs uh, london thanks to the hard work of NHS staff. We have freed more than 30,000 existing hospital beds. That's because they've um, basically got rid of all non-essential or um, certain types of like surgeries and things like that and treatments in order to free up space um, for uh, coronavirus patients. So that's a spin from the head of NHS England. Shame on you, big man. Shame on you. Sir, St Sir Simon Stevens, a spin government. Uh, but with further waves of corona uh, possible, um, it's important that we have extra facilities in place. Uh, senior staff have spoken that the real reason um, NHS uh, Nightingale is empty is far more complex to understand the situation better. We have to go back to a week before the hospital was greenlit. That was the 16th of March. Um, let's see. The, the 16th of March before the lockdown, London hospitals were full of COVID-19 patients. Their intensive care units were taken over uh, for patients on ventilators. Many unexpectedly young struggling to fight the effects of coronavirus. So if you're a young person out there, don't think you're immune to this. Um, it appeared highly likely that Italy, um, like Italy, the UK could rapidly run out of um, intensive, care u intensive care beds um, and ventilators. And that patients would be treated in corridors and doctors forced to make battlefield decisions about who to save. So they would be making uh, percentage chances on, look, this person's younger, they have more chance of surviving rather than um, the older person, the pensioner, um, that sort of thing. Against this backdrop, the um, London Hospital conceived as an overflow facility for patients with uh, respiratory uh, failure, is a word I can't pronounce, Resp respiratory, respiratory whatever um, nursing staffing ratios would be considerably lower and so one of the problems they had is with um, is with nursing so they had um, nursing um, staff ratios would be lower um, let's have a look if I can find it let's start from the top here um, so the idea was you'd have um, one nurse to six patients um, the nightingale was dis um, designed for uh, ICU lung support was not dealt Oh, right, there is. Sorry, I just I, I, this was the thing I was meant to mention about being potentially not the government's fault. So the, I guess you could argue it is, though. I'm, I'm not sure. It's, it's difficult. So basically, one of the other, I think, effects of coronavirus is it can affect your kidneys. And um, the... Um, the um the this hospital here wasn't set up to uh, deal with people who are having uh, kidney problems and to give people um you know i think heart support cardiac support you know breathing um help with the heart and so um you know the, the the it was designed for um just lungs it wasn't designed to set up anything else not enough k um critical care nurses have also been an issue london hospital was expected um expected to second uh, nurses to the facility haven't done so I don't know what that means. Um, a nationwide shortage of crit critical, care uh, critical care nurses hasn't helped. Um, hospitals need to send us their staff as well as their patients for this model to work. So you're already asking hospitals who have a lack of um, staff, as is partly because of government underfunding, which we'll talk about in a minute, and also because they're busy doing other things, you know, helping uh, uh, patients within their own hospitals. And so 
because there aren't enough nurses as is. The idea that you know you could send off um, the patients um, to um, NHS Nightingale hasn't worked because they don't have enough staff as is, uh, which is strange because they complain that they don't have enough people, which has lowered morale. So I don't know what's going on here. It's just so strange. Um, I guess everyone's trying to save face. Um, there's also a point um, to the extraordinary compassionate culture that's flourished at the hospital with higher numbers of staff volunteering to fill in roles that are a huge leap from their normal jobs. Dentists have become nursing assistants and outpatient um, clinic curses have skilled up to look after ITU patients. So basically, they've gotten people, they've try, they're trying to retrain people as best they can, but they need intensive care nurses, which they don't have. And um, so what's the uh, future? If we go to the bottom... Um, Matt Hancock looking like he should, he, the place has just been robbed and he's trying to figure out who's done it with cancer and heart specialists warning that death tolls from other conditions could far worse exceed coronavirus um, so if you look at the death um, um, if you look at the um, extra deaths that we've had it's not just from coronavirus it's also from people that have died of things that could have been avoided if they were able to go to the hospital um, which they can't do because obviously non-essential surgeries and cancer patients cancer treatments have been delayed um, because they're trying to um, trying to deal with the coronavirus as much as possible. Had the NHS been at full strength, maybe um, more towards the 2010 ratios, it would have been in a far better place. But we know the government severely underfunded it. And so the health secretary has pledged on Thursday, within short order, we'll restart the NHS. So what he's going to do is going to go back on a previous save file and he's going to press um, the button to restart from there. I don't, I don't know what he means, we're going to restart the NHS. I don't, I don't know. What was that supposed to mean? So if we jump to this article here, um, we can see that the NHS already had nurse shortages uh, prior to coronavirus. So nursing shortages forcing NHS to rely on less qualified staff. Um, the NHS has relied upon overseas recruitment by lack of EU nurses because of Brexit and also xenophobia, which is tied into Brexit, now means it's taking more nurses from countries such as India and the Philippines. At present, there are almost 44,000 um, nurse vacancies across, NH across the NHS, 12% of the nursing workforce. So you've taken an already weakened NHS, right, that's short of massive amounts of nurses, 12%, 12% shortage, that's what they're saying here. Right, and then you've opened up a hospital which is reliant on nurses to a lesser degree because it's one in six, right? Uh, one nurse to six patients, and then you've now now you're like, oh, we need nurses to to come from other hospitals to help us deal with the um, extra patients we're dealing with in the hospital. And you're like, mate, we don't have enough in our hospitals as is. You know what do you expect us to do here? We can't use that that big Naruto shadow clone jutsu. What what the hell? And so we can see it's partly it is partly government fault. Um, purely because of the lack of nurses. But if we look at here, um, we don't know if the government just thought this is just a breathing problem and therefore we, if we hook up people with like ventilators and things like that, we should be fine. I don't know. I don't know if they got bad advice or if they just ignored the advice which the government seems to enjoy doing. Um, so I lay this mostly at the government's feet for the underfunding of the NHS and just consistently weakening it year on year and also affecting its recruitment through um, following Brexit in a very xenophobic way, uh, but also the fact that they may not have known um, about the kidney problems resulting from uh, coronavirus. So let me know what you guys think. Um, and um, yeah, you know, put in the comments, like, comment, subscribe. And let me know what you guys think. How much blame do you put on the government? How much blame do you put on, or do you say it's not, it's not anyone's fault because how are we supposed to know that it would cause uh, kidney dialysis? But I guess if your breathing is affected, then it's going to affect the rest of your body. But um whatever it isn't that's, that's not the most important thing all we know is that um nhs nightingale you know is it a pr stunt was it done with good intent i don't know and um yeah so hopefully i'll see you in the next one